the Lord is your shepherd. Hallelujah. David said, You shall not walk. I believe that. When we pray God first, what do you think the Father going to hold back from an obedient child? Not a thing. Except the stuff a child might not need. They started, he had to start to seek the proper land. And watch this. God didn't tell him where to go. He said, I'll show you. Wait a minute. You want me to leave everything I know to follow you, Lord, and you ain't even telling me where I'm going? Y'all need to get this. We got to trust God to lead us to the promised land with your help. Don't none of us know how to get there. Ain't none of us ever been to hell. So how can we know how to get there? The only way we know is through the road map that God has given up. His father's house, leave that in hell. Yeah, you're supposed to be the man. You the only, you the one left now. You even taking care of your nephew now. God said, leave it all. Lock the like a son to him. When his brother died, he took my in. His nephew and raised him as his own child. His family, mind and heart, were given over to seeking the things of the world. This is why God was telling Abram, you got to come out from among your family because your family will keep you from following me. Because we try to satisfy those that we love over the one that has created us and has died for us. There's not supposed to be anything to come before God. Not a thing of God. Get away from the worldly influence. That's what he's telling Abraham. See how the problem is when we're trying to satisfy our family, our friends, the people around us. Don't you understand those are the ones that influence you? Not to follow God. They will influence you. To follow the God of their yeah. imagination. You ain't got it. Don't take all of that. <laughs> if God said it, that's exactly what it's going to take. But it, the imagination of the God in their mind, it don't take all of that. See, I got, I, I don't already imagine in my mind what God going to say. What did God say? I don't know what God said, but I don't imagine this thing, man. Whether I imagine it and build a cat, or whether I imagine it and follow it in my mind, it makes no difference. The imagination in our mind of what and who God is, is wrong. God made himself clear to every one of us. Listen to what he turned around, he said, spread to, he said, I will make thee, make a deal. Hold on. We live in a society. Well, people said, you got to go and make something out of yourself. You need to go and make something out of yourself. Can't none of us make anything out of ourselves. We have dreams. We try to follow those dreams, but if those dreams have not been blessed by God and you put in a fight, you're going to follow them faith. You're going to be discouraged about your dreams. Because your dream is not going to work out how you planned it. Yeah. Only God can plan your life ahead. He the one see the end of it. 
the father of faith, which directs us to the, our Savior, Jesus Christ, as a descendant of Abram or Abraham later, which is the, the one that we put our faith in. Abram was the one to show us how to follow the word when he had nobody to be his pastor. We look at the Bible and we look back at what the old patriarchs were doing. And we'll say, well, that was back then. God ain't changed. He said the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. See, Abram was to be the father of all who believed the promise of God and walked in the step of the faith of Abram or counted as the children of faith or the children of God. The same way Abel had to put his faith in God and follow him, in the same way that we have to put our faith in God and follow him. Why do you think he tell you, Jesus said, I am the way? Yes. Wait, wait, listen. He did not say, I am one of the ways. No, he said, he's the way. The way. Ain't no other way except his way. Bless him. He said he was going to bless him. When God said I'm going to bless you, you know what God is telling you? God is telling you I'm going to love you. God is telling you I'm going to protect you. God is telling you I'm going to be in your presence. I'm not going to leave you. God is telling you I'm going to be your provision. I'm going to provide for you. You see, the believer had to put his trust in God no matter what they look like. God would look out there and care for him and the people he would father. Abraham being the father of faith, the promise God gave to Abram, don't you understand he gave it to the believer? The difference between Abram is he was the first believer in the word of God and followed God in what he said. Now Abram, along the way, did he make some mistakes? Why would he? He fled. He didn't have no pattern. We got a pattern been laid before us. We can look back at the pattern. We can study the pattern. We can see the shortcoming of the pattern. We can correct in our life what our pattern didn't correct. Abel did the first pattern that laid. I want y'all to think about this. God chose Abel. Now God got the mole in. What you think the rest of the world do? It done their thing. God knew that they were going in that promised land. He know exactly what's over there. He know how it feel with milk and honey. But what he's saying is, when I get through with you, I'm going to take from those that don't obey me, and I'm going to give it to those who do obey me. And he told those who do obey me, he said, if you stop obeying me, I'm going to take it away from you. Look at it. It said, now verse 3, he said, I will bless them that bless you. Y'all get that? I will bless them that bless And we worry about who coming against us. Y'all y'all need to get this. I'm going to show you something here a minute. It said, and curse them that curses you. Hold on now, you find them folk that talk about me. Yeah. You know the one that lying on them. The one trying to tear down your character. They tear down what God has built up in you. They stop looking at who God is, and they look at the hatred they have to see you being used by him. God said, I'm going to curse you. ain't got to worry about them. I'm going to curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now hold on, let me show you something. I told you I was going to show you something there. He said, I will bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse thee. All right? When they curse you, God turn around and bless you. Y'all ain't getting it. Don't you understand that your enemy is who calls you to be blessed? This moon ain't trying to tear you down. You a child of the king, and the king said, I'm going to be in my childhood. So what they do is, unawareness, indirectly, they don't even know it, but they are actually blessing you. And instead of us accepting our blessing and praising God 
Jesus sat in prison of the air. That same. He is limited. His power is limited. Everything about him is limited. Watch this. In every bit of his power is limited to what God allowed that. Mm -hmm. right. Listen, when we go on the attack, we talking about, oh, Lord, look what the devil is doing. God said, I'm the one that lowered the head. <laughs> I, I, I got something for you to learn from this. I got something for you to grow from this. I'm the one that lowered the head. He came to me and got permission to lay his hand on you, and I restricted him on what he can and what he cannot do. You see, our problem is, is that we want to imagine that. What God gonna accept? Why do we have to imagine when all we got to do is go to Him and ask? He gave us His word. What is it for? For me to sit on the coffee table, make it look good? God was choosing Abram to bless the whole world, the whole earth, all families of the earth. God wanted a people who would love and worship God. Supremely to give their first loyalty to God. A missionary force to this world to be a dynamic witness for God. What is wrong with us as believers? We're supposed to be witnessing for God. But when God sent us to be a witness for Him, we go there. You run, you run all these people in darkness. Well, I don't want to be the only one here talking about the Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want one there knowing. He, he didn't send you there for you to get scared. <laughs> it said, I don't want to say anything because these people are going to come against me. They're not the ones that like me. They don't like you anyway. <laughs> They just allow what's inside of them to come to the outside and just show them. That's all it is. They didn't like it in the first place. They might like things that you do within their realm of what they enjoy. So if you're within their realm, I'll accept you. The prodigal son was accepted by the word. But when he got broke, he was rejected by the same woman. All of a sudden, prodigal son been laying it out for everybody. Oh man, hey, we got us a friend here. Time he went broke. Friend, man, he ain't got nothing. I'm like, no, I ain't nothing like it. I'm trying to tell you. He a Jew. He ain't no Jew. He a believer in the other word. We don't like no believer. We'll accept them as long as they go along with us. But what they bump, and be who they supposed to be. I don't like it. Never did. Now you want to tell me the truth. The truth is there all the time. And sometimes we see it, but we just don't want to see it. Let me get on, because we got a long way to go. Yeah. Isn't there important to comment on those three verses? If not, let's look at verses 4 through 7. Is that correct? So now Aaron 
separation, they spiritual separation. To separate from the world and the things of the world, which is known as sanctification. A life that is totally set apart unto God. Believers, don't you understand that your life, when we accept Christ, is set apart for you to live for God. That, that, that's how we're sanctified through him to do what? Follow him. Abram is following God by just doing what God had told him to do. This is what we are called the beginning of faith. Abram lived. That means he believed God. He took God at his word. And he obeyed God and the promises of God. When we take out to follow God, our job is to obey God. We don't tell God what we imagine that he should accept. This is why the Bible over and over and over shows us how man worship the God of their imagination rather than the true and living God. You see, the God of my imagination, I'm going to do this like I want. Yep. And God going to accept me because I'm going to help somebody that I like. Mm -hmm. That I like. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open and let somebody see me do some type of ministry. Mm -hmm. Did God tell me to do it? No, but it looks good and it makes me soothe my conscience. Yeah. You see, Abram was 75 years old. Now y'all need to see this. When he said that Abram took his wife said, Hold on now. Abram himself got to have a testimony here. Are y'all getting it? Sarah said, wait a minute. Your daddy just died. Abram, everything is left to you. Abram, you can be a fat rat here now. Abram, you can be the man. Abram, we got blue chill. Abram, we've been here for 10 years. Abram, I know the people around you. Abram, I don't really want to move. Maybe God told you to listen to him right here. He didn't tell you to go to the place there. So now Abram, faith influenced others to follow him and God's promise. Let me show you something. In other words, the Bible is showing us that our faith today, it can inspire others to follow God. But well, what happened with us then? What has happened to the church? I'm glad you asked. We took our faith and put it into the material thing that we see here on the earth like all of the other people. And we take God, and once again, I imagine what God should accept. Abram gave all for God. How many of us are willing to give everything for God? Not only did he give all for God, he risked all. In other words, I'm leaving everything behind. I'm taking with me what I have. And I got other people follow me and go to a place I don't know. All of them. He sacrificed everything to God in obedience. Think about that what I just said. He sacrificed everything to God in obedience. We don't want to sacrifice time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time for church, I ain't got time for Bible study, I ain't got time for Sunday school, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. What you doing? I'm using my time for something more important. That's right. I got that. And that's what we'll say. I got to take care of my family. Man, God is big enough to take care of you and your family. Ready, go back to what Brother Forte said. Do you really? Believe it. Because that's what it boils down to. What you really believe. God assured his promise, both promising and the promised man to his faithful servant, Abel. Look what he said in verse 7. He said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Wait a minute. Abel, I'm going to give it to your children. Y'all didn't get that. I'm gonna get to you. Abel never owned one acre in the promised land. Abel got the 
from a land of heaven for being obedient to God. But he never owned the angel in the wrong place. Now watch this thing. Look what Abram did here in verse 7. He said, Until thy seed will I give this man. Wait a minute, Abram already said the fire ain't got no children. Y'all get me? Yes, sir. So don't it look like he did too old for children? Yeah. <laughs> ain't that how we live our life? <laughs> Trying to look at where we at and in life, and then we'll start to say, how much of it I got left and what I can and can't do. Yeah. But we're talking to the one who's holding it in hand, and I give you time, and I take it away from you. <laughs> you don't tell me how you are and what you can do, you can do whatever I say you can do. <laughs> now, now look at this. He said, give to your seed, and there build he an altar unto the Lord who will build a temple. Wait a minute. God had instructed the believers at this time to have a temple or a place of worship. Y'all need to get this. In other words, everywhere that God blessed him, he built an altar. He built a place of worship. Y'all get this? Look at us today. God give us a place of worship. Ah, uh, man, I'm going on vacation. I ain't got time to be going out there. The pandemic got there. I ain't going out there riding the boat. Lately, we come out of town. But guess what? Y'all need to get this. The believer, he said, when it comes to the house of the Lord, he ain't going out there around those people. But yet and still, the same belief will go into the world, whether it's to a party, Organization, uh -huh. family gathering, whatever you call it, what it is. Nah, nah. We go around those people. Yeah, right. Now, the people that are part of the house the is supposed to be yeah. your brothers and sisters in Christ, yeah. which make them your family. Yeah. Now, the people that unbelievers that's in the world, they are not your family. But you will say, I'm not going to the church around those people who are supposed to be my family, but I go around the world and do my thing, and this is what I say. God know my heart. He going to protect me. Yeah. So you want God to protect you in the world, but you're saying God won't protect you in the house. What is Where your family is at. Yeah. Now the thing about it is, how can we be? A part of the same family. Supposed to be heading in the same direction. Supposed to have the same Father, the same Son, the same Holy Spirit. But yet and still we worship Him differently than what He said. Mm -hmm. I'm tight, but it's right. Yeah, right. We can't worship God the way we say. Why do you think God gave us that word but to put it on the coffee table? What's that? No, His word. It's for us to apply to our life. Right. It ain't according to coming on no verse. Kurt, 
I can live with you know that. He said, don't bother. Don't say anything. But now when folk, you don't you know when folk will talk about you, they really hurt. Oh, you hurt me. You, you make me really. Yeah, you make me You make me really. Keep on just talking about me. Yeah. Because you know, and, and, and see, when, like I said, I didn't like when people, I like a lot I was doing a lot <coughs> in previous church. I had a lot of position I was doing. And I didn't like this. Because some people said that, ain't you doing enough? Sit down somewhere. Take a seat.
Well, it ain't gonna work out for my good. Cause God done told me. All I got to do is endure and trust him. You see, a lot of times our problem is enduring and trusting. Amen. And that's what we have to learn how to do. Amen. To endure and to trust God. Amen. God said, I'll never leave you. Amen. And I'll never forsake you. So no matter what we're going through, you know, it's kind of like the Hebrew boy. He didn't quit the fire out. And he didn't keep him out of the fire. But the king said, wait a minute, didn't we put three in? He said, I see a fourth one in there. In other words, Jesus said, I'm not putting the fire out. I'm not keeping you from going in the fire. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in the fire with you. And I'm going to make sure you don't get burned.
said you're going to leave here. Are you ready for that? Well, no, I ain't ready to leave. So you ain't ready to leave, and you actually ain't ready to stay. <laughs> If you just think about it, now about 10 years in the land of Canaan, and nothing to show for it. No sun, no land, not even land. Wait a minute, God, you done promised me this. But you know what? We live in a microwave society. I want mine right now. No juju got here and I see. And juju don't even go to church. He don't have nothing to do with you. I see what he got. He doing good. I'm going to do like that. Oh, so you're going to turn away from the creator. The two of your creation. Because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Everything on this earth is creation. He is the creator. Amen. Remembering that God was giving Aaron a vision of all of this. God took him outside, which means that Aaron was inside the tent in his body. But his body was laying in the tent. But he took him outside. And this way he told him to look up and count the stars. So his seed would be the same way. Now how many can count the stars? <laughs> I done tried. It don't work. There's so many of us that you get you get saved numbers. Wait a minute, did I count that one? You, you, you. It don't happen, you can't do it. It was the word of God that he believed, and you need to know that when God comes around, in verse 6 he said, he believed in the Lord. Wait a minute, y'all get this. God has given you the way of salvation right here. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Wait a minute, hold on. Abram was righteous then what? What made Abram righteous? He trusted God and put his faith in God and obeyed God. That's what made him righteous. All the way through this thing, it was his faith that made him righteous. Not Abram himself. These people are always talking about what they do. Well, I did this, that should be enough. So now you're going to tell God what should be enough. So now, indirectly, let me help some people out. In case you don't know it. <laughs> what you're actually doing is telling God that you go. Oh, no, I'm not real. I ain't never said that. I ain't never said I was going to say Your action said. Think about it. You got my imagination. I imagine what he's supposed to accept. And I'm going to tell him when he wants to bless me. All right. Because I see I want this over here. Lord, you're supposed to give it to me. Because I'm your child. Are you really? Like An obedient child or a disobedient child? He said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of her of charity. You know what? We need to do more of looking at where God has brought us from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know that's right. And now, y'all need to see it. Our problem is, God bring us from one place. He put us in another place. We get puffed up in that place, and all of a sudden, I got more sin than him. Verse 6. This is what covers the great doctrine of justification. A person can become right with God by faith. We are justified by our faith. position in Jesus Christ by our faith. And because we're positioned in him, and our faith is in him, God looks at us and says, look at that righteous fellow. Y'all ain't getting this up. Yeah. Look at that. 
you put money in the bank, do you still have that money in your pocket or that money credited to you? Credited to you. Think about it, man. When you put that, I, I put $100,000 in the bank. I walk down the street and say, hey, hey man, uh, let me hold $100. Man, I just put my money in the bank. Where are they? It's down there in the bank. You can check. It's credited that I got $100,000 in there. But now, what you got in your pocket? Bro, zero. Ain't nothing in my pocket is all credited to me. Ain't nothing in our works is all credited to us. Now, because we're obedient to God, the works that we do earn rewards from God. It's not that you're working to be saved, because no man can work to be saved. We work because we are saved. Not to be, we're credited. God said, I am the one who saved you, called you out of earth, for the purpose of giving you this covenant, which includes both the promised seed and the promised land. God called you out of the world. You accepted him. Y'all, we need to get this. We accept God by choice. Y'all get that? Yeah. All right, now when we accept him by choice, we supposed to follow him by choice. Do y'all see this? We made a choice to accept it because we wanted to hide behind him. He didn't want to die by our sin. He didn't want to go keep us out of here. He went full. So now I accept him. Chose him. When I chose him, I chose his way of life. This is why Christianity, people say all that, you know that the Christian religion. No, religion is actually out of ceremony. Then. No, Christianity is a way of life. It is not a religion. We are actually supposed to live this out in our everyday life. Not just Sunday. Not just two to the Bible step. It's a seven day a week, 24 hour a day thing. We don't turn it out on Saturday night or Friday night though. We want to hang out with, with the world. This is what takes away. I'm gonna have to say it a lot of times we come to church. I get to church, I'm here most the time. <laughs> Why am I tired? Man, I was hanging out last night and now I'm coming to church. Are you prepared? You know it's Sunday school. What is Sunday school about? I don't know. I'm going to what path down to say when I get there. We should be familiar with God's word before we get there because if there's anything in that word that we don't understand, now the time to ask for it. But if I don't know what it says, I'm going to come in here. The only thing I get is what you put in if I don't go to sleep. <laughs> because I'm tired. What if I come to church on Sunday morning and I can't all the city? They're like, what wrong with house, man? I ain't a real night. What you doing? What you doing? Well, you know, I, the relative man, they had a party, and I tell you, they wanted me to come. I ain't get in about 2 30. Oh! I got in bed, I'm so tired. Now, how am I going to preach? Y'all. My mind ain't going to be right. Because I'm tired. I don't want to tie myself out to work for the Lord. If I'm going to tie myself out, I don't want to tie myself out for the Lord and then get the word of what I got left. Are you? Yep. In other words, what I'm saying is the world shouldn't come first. The world is supposed to come last. When I say the world, that's including our job that we have to go to. How we got to survive. <laughs> but that job is not supposed to come from God. He's the one gave it to you. Mm. He gave you the ability to get there. And believe it or not, He gave you the health and strength to do it. Mm. What if? Matter of fact, I had a young lady ask me, young lady, what if God just took away what we look at it being the basics? You know, little stuff like you can't 
how to breathe. I say. Little stuff, you know you. Yeah, I say. You wake up, you can't see. I can't see! I gotta go to work, but I can't see! Who you gonna call? Let me call my boss up there. They gotta give me some sight. Oh, boss, I need some sight. Boss, you can't make it today? I can't see! When are you gonna make it tomorrow? Oh, no, I can't see! Just stay on your home. Home with that. Well, why then? Don't come back. After a period of time, you call in and say you can't see. Don't that job it. that you love so much that you've been getting everything you got to. It's about to show you how much it love you. And you know what it's going to tell you? I'm sorry. But we don't need your services anymore. We found someone to fill your position. We needed somebody who can see. Are y'all getting it? Yes, sir. <laughs> but we put all that to it. Well, we actually can't get nothing out of it. You say, I get paid. You get paid for what you done done. <laughs> and it wasn't nothing but being there. You had to go there and stay eight hours to get that check. 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, whatever they say. But when it comes to God, where are we? I'm too busy. Or else, I imagine this year to be a tough thing, Lord. I ain't never done that. I've done this. <laughs> what if God asked you, well, I woke you up yesterday and gave you your health and strength. I don't think I'm going to give it to you today. Mm -hmm. oh. What if God said that? Yeah. Haven't I, wait a minute, haven't I given you enough I died for you? I think I'm just going to let you lay here paralyzed for the rest of your life. Man, he ain't right. I mean, think about it. Why me, Lord? What I mean? <laughs> Is there any question you can't make out? We done went over a little bit. I don't want to come in just a little bit. Yes, sir, come on. Okay, in this, in this chapter, right now, how many of you hear me say it was well, like? It was Between 12 and 13, 15, it's 10 years. It was 10 years, right? So, you know, right now, time, you know, 10 years, you know. So, all right, this is what I'm saying. I'm going to make it quick. Uh, if the Lord say he's going to do something for you, or matter of fact, you know, you might ask the Lord for something, and he probably going to do it when you, you know. But you say, hey, Abram was part of a plan, man. I ain't got no children, I ain't got no land, and all this and all that, right? Yeah. All right, so now listen. Uh, true love. 15 years. Yes. Uh, the help of the Lord will be 16. So, uh, we've been saying that I should be 13 years in. You know, being busy, you know, like when I came in, I knew I'm going to get it now. And I asked the Lord for this, and I asked the Lord for that. When I came to realize, you know what I'm saying, I was shooting three on the bleach. You know what I'm saying? I was out of bounds. <laughs> man, I was shooting threes off the bleach. You feel what I'm saying? I was shooting threes off the bleach. And you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? 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 The reason why I say that, 15 years, the church made 13 years with me. And I know it was like two years in the box, or two, three, about three, four years in the box over there. And then, it's like we got one. And uh, if I ain't mistaken, you can build from there on two, like, you know, maybe, you know, life and death experience. And, but at the same time, you know, he had faith. And, and he, um, he kind of helped me start believing in the Lord because, like, he was so sick. But it didn't bother him. You know, it might have, let's say, man, it might have been one of those and showed them they be crying and all that. But deep, you sit right now, I'm like, yeah, I'm 
So guess what? God gonna raise up one in that generation that they can relate to, to bring them to Him, but that old ink pen gonna run out. And once that generation down, then there's another generation. And that's what we're seeing, generation to generation. So we have to learn in our generation, be patient. Wait on the Lord and trust him. He ain't going to lie to you, and he ain't going to leave you. But if there ain't other questions coming, and we prepare to close out our church, with power on the inside to deal with self that's on the inside. So that we may be able to do what we cannot do ourselves, by ourselves, on our own self. But it's through the Holy Ghost, and it's the end of I want to say that we had a good men's meeting on yesterday. Wow. And amen. We had a good meeting on yesterday. Good. Amen. Thank the Lord for his business that he placed before. Yeah. On next Sunday, we are celebrating the Catholic Appreciation. That's right. Yeah. Reverend Dr. Willie Thomas will be down.
Lord, let your word come into our heart and us to apply your word. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you help us to be a blessing unto your holy name. We ask that you bless the tithes and offerings that have been lifted for the other building of your kingdom. Bless those who gave, those that had the time to give, but just didn't have it. Lord, we ask you thank your son, Jesus Christ, and name we pray. Amen. 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 Before we get started, we have our pledge. And we do all the same thing before the word goes forth. Today I'm going to allow you once again to be seated. And I will be reading to you once, once again. Are we ready? Yes. This is my God. My, my best instruction for both in the earth. It is the word of God. I will study to show myself approved unto God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Because God said it. I believe it, and that sells Amen. Amen. At least you got to start saying it. Amen. We send my whole Bible up to let you know I'm with you. Amen. I ain't got how to read it yet, but I got it with you. Don't worry about it. There's a lot of people that know how to read it and still don't. Amen. We're going to begin today with Romans the seventh chapter. We're going to begin with the seventh verse, and we're going to conclude this whole chapter down to verse 45. On last Sunday, chapter 6, we saw what is called positional sanctification. Positional sanctification means that you are identified with Christ in his death and his resurrection. We are to present ourselves to him and to trust him to live the Christian life through us. You see, God is not only the word that became flesh, but he is also the written word. There are two subjects that we'll be talking about in this chapter seven. One of those subjects we talked about on last week, which is called the shackles of a saved soul. Our shackles was broke from sin, was through the death, of Jesus Christ, us dying to our sin. Today we're going to talk on the second hand of that, and that is the struggle of the saved soul. You see, after we become saved, there's a great struggle that we go through. And we must learn to present ourselves to Him, recognize that we are joined to the living Christ. And because we are joined to the living Christ, we ought to start living as Christ did. We use the excuses to say, well, I'm not Jesus, and that's correct. None of us are Jesus. None of us can ever be Jesus. But we are supposed to strive every day to be more like Jesus. Because he is the way that has been set before us. And this is why the scripture tells us that we're supposed to follow the way, the truth, and the life. Because if we follow the way, and we walk in the truth, we will receive eternal life. The power of the sanctification of this chapter shows us the way that we are not to live. What I mean not to live means not to stay there. Every one of us is going to go through this struggle, but we are not to stay there. The law, it has no claim on the belief. And last week, our subject was death to sin and alive to God. But today we're going to say the conclusion of that. Dead to sin, but alive to God. The conclusion. We're going to finish the story today. This is a continuation of the law versus grace. Grace is God's undeserved or unmerited faith. It means that God holds back what you deserve, and then give us what we don't deserve. You see, what we do deserve is just punishment for our sin. What we don't deserve is God's grace to take our place and to give us His grace now. God freely accepts and forgives the person's sin and justifies the person by His faith. We were talking about that this morning in our Sunday school. You see, remember, it was by able faith that God counted him as being righteous. The law only dominates a man as long as he lives and is controlled by that sin 
same nature. Remember for us to be born again means that there has to be a death and a resurrection. The law is enacted by conversion. When, the, when we are converted to Christ, the law becomes enacted because we die to the law. Remember Christ was in the grave. He died to the law. He fulfilled the law. But he also died for the law. He is the only one that lived out the law of God perfectly. And the law was given by God to show man his need for a savior. You see, the law shows us we can't do it ourselves. Every one of us falls short of God's glory. The law was given once again to show us that we need a savior. So how can man, how can we walk around today talking about what I need or what I do? And God should accept me because I'm a good person. Every one of us are good in our own life. There is not a bad person in our own life. We are not it. We can see the fault of everybody else, but not us. Matter of fact, before we see the fault of ourselves, we are looking at somebody who made me do what I did. Brother, in the same, I did it myself. When we look here, we start today in verse 6, verse 7. Remember, verse 1 through 6 is where the shackle of sin was broken to man. Now Paul is going to take us through this struggle of this soul after we have been saved. Because he's going to compare the law to grace. But yet I was struggle through this law. When we look at verse 7 here, it says, what shall we say here? Is the law seen? And he turns and turns around and says, certainly they're not. On the contrary, I would have not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covenant unless the law had sin. You shall not come. So it's through the law that we become conscious of sin. Without the law, we would roam around in ignorance, not knowing right from wrong. We wouldn't know what pleases and what displeases God. It is the law that shows us our shortcoming. And I've come to find out, when we look at our Savior as being such good people, the last thing that we want to see is that they're not a good person. Mm -hmm. What do the Word of God show us? Exactly. Sin is dead, but with the law, 
Sin is a lie. So in other words, if we didn't have nothing to tell us that we're wrong, we'd never be wrong. Everything that we do would be right to us because there's no guideline. There's nothing to say, don't do this. And that's what arouses it up to do something. When we look at verse 9 here, it says, I was alive once without the law. But what the commandment, when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. A man who does not know or pay attention to the law, he don't pay attention to sin. He don't pay attention to what's wrong. He don't pay attention to what's right. He goes on what he feels. And what he feels is what makes him alive. Why do you think that there are so many people today that don't want to know the truth? Why do you think people don't want to be taught what the Word of God says? Because the Word of God don't tell you what you can do. Good. All right, but guess what? What he's telling me I can't do, this is what I want to do. I want to do. All right, y'all get this? Yes, so now watch this thing. Because of what I can do, and then because of what I want to do, I show through this law that this is wrong, but through my feelings, it feels like it's right. Why? Because I am satisfied or craving that I have within me. Verse 11 said, For sin taken occasion by the commandment, Deceive me and by it heal me. Sin, self righteousness, it says, obey the law and you shall live. In other words, we sometimes as people, we think that if I do something where God says, I'm going to be all right. What part am I going to do what God says? The part that I like. Yeah. It's kind of like that. My dear had some movie that was made, yes, and she was trying to tell a young lady that she needed to read the Bible. So she went in and got the Bible, she told her, she said, you need to read the Bible. Young man can't read the Bible, but she going to go on to the Bible, she come back, she said, well, there's some stuff that's blacked out in the Bible. She said, don't worry about that stuff, that's the stuff that doesn't work, I don't like. Yeah, I don't like. So the stuff that I do like I accept. So guess what? Because I don't want to hear the truth, the Bible says in the last day that man shall have itch and ill, meaning that I'm going to look for what I want to hear, and then I'm going to satisfy myself because I imagine God going to be pleased with me doing the best I can. That's right. So, my best is doing what I want. That's right. We can get it. The law proves that man is not perfect mm -hmm. and cannot live without sin. Mm -hmm. None of us, it don't take nothing but a thought. No. That's all it takes is a thought. And when you when the thought comes, us as believers, we have to learn how to kill the thought. Nip it. Before the thought impregnates our mind and we give birth to sin. Because if we keep thinking about it, something is going to happen. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just, and good. Watch this thing. In other words, the law showed me my sin, my sin caused me to die. The law showed me what I need to do, and what I need to do to live. The law showed me how sharp that I am of God. It showed me how imperfect that I am. And it showed me how I need somebody to save me. Every one of us needs somebody to save me. Watch this thing. The law is holy. But I, I don't like the law. Do that make the law unholy? I don't like, I don't, I don't want to fight the law. Do that make it unholy? It's still holy. It don't stop being holy because we don't like it. It don't stop being holy because we don't accept it. It don't stop being holy because we don't live by it. The word of God is holy and the man that is holy and they will be holy. Verse 13 says, that then, what is good, what is good to come death to me? Sin can feel good sometimes, but it will bring death. 
Because this thing gets better. Okay. It says, for we know that the law is spiritual. Hold on now. Paul said, but I'm firm. Do y'all see it? Yeah. You see, the law is spiritual, but I am firm and was sold under sin. Anytime you see the word colonel, colonel means to be unspiritual. Please. Made of the flesh. Consist of the flesh. A body of flesh and blood that's controlled by our sinful nature. We do not allow that sinful nature to get stirred up because it will make us a slave to sin when God has bought us our sin that we may have eternal life. It says, soul on the sin, Adam sold us. Adam sold us to sin. Jesus Christ bought us out of sin. This is why the believers do not willfully, openly, knowingly, wantingly, and planning sin. Our plan is just the opposite. An unspiritual or carnal man, he fails to live for God, no matter how hard he tries. Why? Because he is in the flesh. Verse 15 says, For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree that the law that it is good. He needs a savior. Let me show you something about Paul. You see, one, one outside his own flesh who can forgive his sin and part eternal life to him which is Jesus Christ. What Paul is telling us, now first of all, let me do a case here. Y'all need to get this because we're going to look at this case from two different sides. Number one, remember who Paul was. Paul was a Pharisee. Uh -huh. A Pharisee who knew the law. A Pharisee who's supposed to be living by the law. But Paul was also a man that had an encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to the mountain. So now when Paul is talking about his struggle, there are two point of view that are pointing at this struggle. One point of view is saying that Paul was experiencing trying to live a righteous life by the law. But every time he found that he could not do it himself. So he felt, he knew that he needed someone outside of himself to help him or do it for him. This is Jesus Christ. Now, Paul could also be talking about after the encounter that he had with Jesus Christ. Paul called to the master. And now that he has been saved by Jesus Christ, and now he is born again, and now he is born of the Spirit, he could be talking about how he has struggled himself to do what was right. But yet it's still wrong was always there. Well now this is the key. No matter which side that Paul is talking on, Paul get the an answer. And I'm going to give it to you again. This is why we have no excuse. Whether Paul was 
eternal. And he's not spiritual. That means he hasn't been born again at that time. Look at the scripture. If he was current, that means that he was still in the flesh. When we look at it, I believe it's the verse that I just came over, verse 14. Verse 14 said, but we know that the law is spiritual, but I am kernel. I am fleshly and soul of the sin. This is before a renewal for what I am doing. I do not understand. Come on now. For what I will to do, that I do not like. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. No matter how we look at it. Paul is telling us the law is right. In other words, the word of God is right. Yeah, 
and God has his God. Which law do man follow? What's that, man? The ones who will to do good. Uh -huh. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man that sin. But I see another law in my memory, warring against the law of my mind. Hold on now. We see two laws now, don't you? You got the law of sin, but then you got the law of his mind. It said, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my memory. So now Paul finds that he has two laws or two forces within him. He has evil, verse 21, and he has sin, verse 23, that battles the loss of the inner being, the new person, the mind, the Holy Spirit, the inward man. See, what he's talking about is the same thing that Paul tells us in the 12th chapter of Romans. He said not to be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. As his mind is renewed, the, the sin nature still comes against and war in his mind. This is why it is important for the believer to kill this thought while it's in his mind before it impregnates your mind and gives birth to sin. The love of his mind is the word of God. See, a civil war is like two people who are battling on the inside of God. We as believers, we go through it every day. See it right there. But the word of God in our mind to transform us to the will of God. A man or a person cannot be renewed without the renewal of their mind. Our mind has to be renewed. The only way that our mind can be renewed is through the word of God. Now look at verse 24. Paul turned around and he said, Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who we are delivered. Listen for he has a question. First of all, he said, Oh, wretched man that I am. Then he said, well, Lord, in other words, who will deliver me from this body of death? What did Paul say here? Paul said, I need somebody to help me. I need to say, I can't live myself. The whole man is both flesh and spirit and contend with himself until he is completely spiritual. Don't you understand the what that we have on the inside? When we first accept Christ, there's a strong war of that sin nature. The more we allow the Holy Spirit to control us, the more we start to become spiritual people. And then we start to learn how to walk by the Spirit instead of by the flesh. You see, we walk by the flesh because of a sin nature. We are carnal. But when we accept Christ, He's the one that buys us out of sin. And that's why he says, shall we condemn this sin? Certainly not. God forbid. Yeah. We are supposed to leave, walk away from sin. Deliverance is found only through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now watch this. Now I'm going to give you the answer. Paul sum it all up. I thank God. Y'all need to get this. You see, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I made I myself serve the law of God. But with the faith, the law of sin. This is why God brings us out of that old flesh and nature. How do you think we become a new creature? The old thing, the sinful nature, are passed away. All things become new. So what am I doing? I'm putting down the sinful nature. How can I do this? I can't do it myself. I'm glad that Paul said only through Jesus Christ. Only. 
make me sick, I'll just have to find out. God, no. All of my help is gone. But you know, thank God that he sent his son so we can go to his son. 